Blessed to be here at the National Religious Broadcaster Convention, Orlando, Florida, with Paul uh, Renfro, and uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. And uh, a lot of serious issues to deal with, I know. Uh, you, you, you have concerns about, I, and I wanted to um, give me an opportunity to talk about your key book, maybe in a website, for yes. more information about what you're doing. Very good. So anybody who's concerned for America, like Dr. Harper and I are, will really appreciate the revelation that is in the scripture about the unseen world and particularly the kingdom of darkness. So I'm, my name is Paul Renfro and my, I have a nine book series entitled The Unseen Series mm -hmm. and it can be found at the website ParadigmLighthouse.com Paradigm, P-A-R-A-D-I-G-M, Lighthouse.com of course, the books are also on Amazon as well, but if we can avoid supporting tech tyranny, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, ParadigmLighthouse.com. And do you know, Dr. Harpy and I have been discussing how uh, our leadership in Washington, D.C. is reluctant to use the word sin or to talk about sin and repentance. And that's a heartbreaking thing. It is. I was going to address uh, your concern about the reason the fear that might be associated with this yes. because there seems to be a lot there's a lack of courage to address the, the, the core problem of America. And so the very first thing that we need to talk and the viewer needs to recognize is that in the book of Revelation one of the there's a list of people that who will not enter the kingdom of heaven and one of them is cowards. And mm -hmm. this is a time when we absolutely cannot afford to be cowards because it's not merely our nation that it's at stake but also the light that our nation has been instrumental in, in promulgating across the world. You know, people think of America as a Christian nation. Well, from within we know that, uh, you know, maybe it's not so much, but our founding documents and the bulk of our people and the values that our, that our Constitution embodies, as well as President Lincoln's uh, call to repentance was so pronounced. I mean, you can mm -hmm. speak to that better than me, but it's so inspiring. It is. So basically, uh, what President Lincoln was saying, uh, acknowledge that we were a nation that has left God out of the picture. Mm -hmm. We don't acknowledge him, but uh, you're talking about people that are cowards. Yes. Jesus, that reminds me of what Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me in front of men, mm -hmm. I will be ashamed of you before my father. Mm -hmm. and, and it kind of relates to why these politicians are afraid. They're really ashamed yes. of him and all that he stands for. So there's something we, we must acknowledge and I just want to hold up the book, the recent book in the Unseen series for the viewer. Nobody sees this creation, the origin of the devil and his replacements. Now, if you're looking in a mirror, you're the replacement and we're the replacements because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Human beings were designed to fill the place in heaven that Lucifer forsook when he rebelled. However, let's back up a little bit. When, when only God existed and He had created nothing else, He made three critical decrees which Jesus described using the words before the foundation of the world. Now you can research that in Scripture for yourself, but this book, chapter 8, is all about that. And so it highly influences our place in the world. And let's come back to politicians because we have to be careful as listeners and viewers because everybody is subject to the temptation of cowardice and shame about Jesus Christ. And so it's very important that we be acknowledging the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. in all our dealings by confessing our sins, repenting, calling out to Him, because He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, so there's nothing to be ashamed of. Blessed are the mourn. Well, certainly there's a lot to mourn. Blessed are the meek. But guess what? These are qualities that the kingdom of darkness can never counterfeit. Mm -hmm. Any, all other religious qualities, the kingdom of darkness can counterfeit. That's how it was the greatest Bible students of the day that crucified Jesus. And the most religious people that often are the ones who are persecuting, the ones who are, mm -hmm. who are loving the Lord with all their heart. And so we must be cautious. But when it comes to politicians, <clears throat> the origin of the devil and his replacements. So Lucifer was in heaven with God. That's Ezekiel 28. He rebelled and he was cast out of heaven. That's Ezekiel 28. He had partners that he recruited. That's Isaiah 14 and Revelation 12. And then they have a certain craving that drives all that they do. And that's in Luke 11, Jesus revealed. Now this is not low-hanging fruit. But it's in the scripture, and the explanatory power of these truths is so comprehensive, it explains 
the answer to your question. And so with that set up, I'd like to address your question. Is that okay? Yeah. I, I was thinking about earlier about how mm. that uh, uh, people are afraid. People to, are afraid. To address this. And no. the big question is why? Yes. Why do people have the fear of man? Yes. So traditionally in traditional theology, we have three enemies as Christians. Number one is our own sinful flesh. And you know, I don't need to go very far. We just testify to that mm -hmm. ourselves, right? So or even our own flesh can in induce a self-preservation instinct that forsakes trust in God and puts our trust in man. That's Psalm 118, middle verse of the Bible. Don't put your trust in man, but to put your trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. So and then the second enemy, of course, is the world. And that is the comprehensive totality of all people in their flesh resisting the Lord God. But then the third one, and this is really poignant right here. The third one, as we know, is the devil and the kingdom of darkness. And so the kingdom of darkness, how does it work? And Apostle Paul said this, and I was so excited when, when Dr. Harper asked me the question because he, the Apostle Paul said, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, you know, not against our politicians or what have you, or each other, or our enemies in war. Uh, we wrestle against principalities, powers, rulers of evil in the heavenly realms. And so the how do they operate? And that's one of the great discoveries in the Unseen series, and it's all from Scripture. Now, can I just, i got to pause mm -hmm. for a moment. Because when you go to talking about the Unseen Realm, the world of spirit, sorcery, witchcraft, idolatry is very real. There's probably a lot of it in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. as you can mm -hmm. testify. So it's very important for us as believers to be completely founded on the Word of God. Only God can reveal the unseen realm to us, but the devil tries to unseen, re reveal it as well. That's why they could burn all those soul, scrolls of sorcery in Acts 19. So the, the, how does, nobody sees this unseen realm, how to unlock Bible mystery. So I just want to emphasize that we're talking about the world of spirit and enemy spirits, but mm -hmm. we're not doing it apart from the Word of God. The Word of God is what you must major in before you can have any protection in the world of spirits. It, so, it, it is very troubling about uh, about this issue of, about people's respect more for man than, than for God. Mm. Uh, and I'd, I'd like yes. for you to, to share once again uh, a website for um, oh, thank you about what you're dealing with. Yes, so the listener and viewer, it's ParadigmLighthouse.com. P-A-R-A-D-I-G-M, mm. ParadigmLighthouse.com. Mm. And so back to the question about what induces the fear, and we talked about the three enemies that we face the flesh the world the devil but when it comes to the kingdom of darkness after the tower of babel god divided the nations by language now at that moment god made his commitment to the bible and that's a very key moment in biblical history but the kingdom of darkness gained opportunity to exercise control over large numbers through check choke points and bottlenecks so our national leaders and our national institutions represent bottlenecks that the kingdom of darkness is using to control large numbers of people, to cut off Christian education, to cut off the mention of President Lincoln and his call to repentance, to obscure the necessity of repenting from sin. This is what the kingdom of darkness is using their bottlenecks and choke points to do. Now, mm -hmm. you, Dr. Harper, you yourself told me that you have to find refuge from being in Washington, D.C. because mm -hmm. that swamp effect, and that's that, that there's, a, there's a geographical locality of a principality. Now, this is why Apostle Paul could say, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You, you know, you might feel like you are sometimes when they shut you up or ridicule or persecute you. And I hold up Dr. Harper as a great example of bravery. There's no coward in this man, let me tell you. And anybody who listens or watches his podcast continually will be strengthened in bravery because he's an example. But the thing I want to say is that this intimidating force that wants to shut you up. And all of us who are Christians feel it when we feel like we should speak encouragement to somebody or minister the Lord Jesus to somebody or speak the truth to somebody about their indulgence and sin. And all these things, this intimidating force just comes right on us. That's the kingdom of darkness. It's not from without us. The world, of course, participates. But the kingdom of darkness wants to shut us up. So Jesus said, guess what? Blessed are the peacemakers. And that's, that requires courage. This is no passivity right here, is it? Uh, not at all. So we've got a lot to deal with. 
Yes. And would encourage people to pray. Yeah. Uh, as we oh. before, thank you Hallelujah. for sharing with me and oh. uh, about the, the serious issues of, about what's really going on in America uh, behind the scenes. It really isn't rocket science. And God has made it very clear. Uh, I know. So thank Can you. Can we pray together for America sure. right now? Thank you. Lord Jesus. We call your love for America into activation. And we plead the sacrifices of your many saints in America. And we call forth everybody with a shred of integrity to respond to the call of heaven, to expose cheaters, that all who did cheat will be burdened to confess and repent so that they can love you and walk with you. We pray for repentance from the top, President Biden, all the candidates, Trump, DeSantis, Scott, and others. And we pray for repentance to be the clarion call so that we can have the Great Awakening edition number three in Jesus' name. Amen. Great to talk with you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Harper. Here at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention in Orlando, Florida.